accounts. Um, as a current situation, most of you will be aware, cruise business, railroad ferries and the, and the smallish marina. Um, the thrust of the Dover Pack 2 project, uh, particularly uh, the Phase 2, is to look at environmental opportunities uh, for the port of Dover, so it becomes a much more greener port uh, across the, in comparison with us across the UK. So the thrust of their study for Dover uh, was in engaging consultants to look at uh, energy needs at the port of Dover. Um, as you can see, there's uh, an annual energy spend 1.5, as I say, 15 million would be extremely expensive. But it's the usual uh, use of energies uh, across the port, lighting, temperature, transport, infrastructure. Uh, as a split of uh, the energy sources, uh, predominantly electricity, nearly three quarters of energy used, uh, followed up by gas and oil, and a small bit of uh, diesel. This just sets out the uh, CO2 uh, reduction proposals and then you said the last five years. This slide just shows the future proposed port development plans at Dover. Uh, the idea is to use on um, the western side of the port area the, the old western docks to become a logistics centre with the potential of uh, relocating some of the uh, um, container, container lorries and container movements to the western side of the, of the docks and an associated logistics centre for distribution of goods. Um, and obviously um, some further improvements on the eastern side of the railroad uh, facility. I won't do, dwell too much on the master plan, but it just gives you uh, some views about uh, how they developed the western side of the uh, Dover port, uh, including, as I mentioned, two cargo berths, uh, central logistic buildings. That's the footprint for the proposed new development. Our development plans and our current energy profiles and, and trying to understand what that means for us in terms of energy. Um, so uh, that's what we've quantified now and the development plans and energy has been calculated. And we're looking at how we can then best manage the energy in the most renewable way. Um, taking advantage of the um, uh, elements that we have in Dover that potentially could, uh, could use to create energy such as solar theory or wind, uh, uh, etc., which is most, most useful um, to meet the demand profile. Um, what first came out was the real need to rationalise uh, the uh, electricity distribution network, because um, in part of the port we've got quite a lot of demand on one network. And then another part of the port is very disjointed uh, distribution network. And because of this, the demand is very uh, isolated in all different areas of the port. And actually, um, being able to rationalise it into one single demand where we could manage that energy uh, better was actually very key to us, to us being able to deliver um, something useful for the port as a whole um, and think about uh, energy strategically. So that, that, was, that was very interesting. Um, and we've come up with a strategy of, of how to rationalise that that fits alongside um, civil development plans. Um, we then looked at uh, energy centres um, as they're often the most efficient way to uh, deliver an energy demand, but it, it was considered not suitable for the port in its current uh, ha its current um, operation because we don't have enough uh, thermal load. Uh, the energy we have, mo uh, there's not much demand in terms of uh, temperature, so there's not um, a huge demand for heating or hot water, 
that run um, that could be met through providing heat as opposed to providing electricity. Um, there's potential for a decent amount of thermal load to come uh, online in the future with regeneration plants located close to the port but not actually operated by the port authority. So this then fits into that energy hub of making sure we're making use of local in, uh, industries and sharing um, beneficial uh, issue, um, beneficially sharing uh, a potentially energy centre uh, for the future. But um, until those plans are developed further, then we, it, an energy centre just wouldn't be feasible. So. It's something that may be feasible in the future and something for us to consider going forward, but it's, it's not something that would be suitable at the moment. So the most suitable approach is to follow a decentralised approach of low and zero carbon technologies, um, which potentially could form a mix of um, tidal, solar, uh, wind, or um, taking a good look at anaerobic digestion as well. Um, so so that, that, that's something most appropriate uh, sources and we're just finalising now which mix works best for the four in terms of meeting the demand profile that we, we have and that we're expecting in the future. And that, that's pretty much, much it on what, on what, we've, been, what we've been up to. Um, so for, for instance within our Eastern Docks operation all of the heating demand is fed by electric mm -hmm. because we don't have any uh, gas in that area. So we couldn't actually provide heat directly to the buildings without putting in a, um, a, a, a huge infrastructure requirement for heat um, uh, heat main. Yeah. Uh, whereas the, there might be potential for it in the future, as in because if you put in an energy centre, it would it would basically create the energy at the same time as heat, so that you use the heat like like CHP, so you produce the heat and use it. We don't have anywhere that could usefully use that amount of heat that would be generated by creating enough energy to hit our electricity baseline. So it would just be wasted. So it wouldn't be beneficial to do with that centralised energy centre. Uh, but when in the future, if, if um, the plan is to create an area which can be used for regeneration and water, a waterfront focus for regeneration over town, that potentially will have shops, cafes, restaurants, hotels, and then they then will have a heating demand, and therefore uh, an energy centre would be suitably located next to them, because then you could use that heat into those facilities. Um, the tidal industry, because it's, it's a new industry, mm. um, it's been very hard to kind of... Um, get any certainty about the power outputs that you're going to get from a device and um, we've looked in Dover about what, what kind of power we could get from our um, the uh, flows that we have in our, our location. So our first stage really has been to do a, um, a hydrodynamic model for mm. the Dover area, understand what kind of flows we've got and then we've been liaising with um, uh, device manufacturers to find the most suitable device for our location and we can put them in the model and find out how much energy is produced from them uh, to see if there's if anything that would be viable. Um, now, we went into the project and we said as a minimum we wanted to come out with a hydrodynamic model and the device manufacturers that have been um, at the point where they could produce a commercial um, device have all been focusing on tidal flows that have been a bit too big for us, yeah. Yeah, um, a bit too strong compared to what we have here. And um, although we're in the final stages now, just just finishing off putting them through the model to find out what the energy output is, it's, it's unlikely this is going to be anything that was cost uh, beneficial. However, we're getting device suppliers who are not quite there yet, but are really interested in our site now because they're focusing on the kind of flow that we're talking that we have here. Um, so although within the project timeline we have a kind of device, the outputs that we created for the project are actually already I'm st I've got device developers speaking to me on a, on a regular basis going, yeah we're interested. So I think I think there is a, a lot of potential there for uh, what we're describing as low flow niche or environments. Mm -hmm. 
Because mm. um, from my perspective, tile industry is focused on high flow environments, which needs mm. a lot of engineering to be able to put that in place. And then you've got to get the cable back to shore, and if you've got any maintenance issues, it's a big job to get it out and deal with any maintenance issues. Whereas a low, show, low flow near shore environment is very different. Um, because yes, you're not going to get much energy out, as much energy out of it, but the engineering requirements to make a device that's going to operate in those parts is much simpler. Deployment's much simpler, maintenance yeah. is much simpler, and also if you put it in the lo location close to a port, the connection is so easy and you've got a demand right there. Um, and that fits in with what we're doing here, where we're looking at and trying to make a network that, that it would fit into, because and from a cost perspective, the device manufacturers, if they're connected to the network, they can only get what you'd, the cost of power to connect into a network. Whereas if they connect to us, we're buying a much higher price than, than they'd be uh, getting from the network. So it, it gives, there's a lot of potential there, I think. Um, and we're actually running the final conference for the project here in Dover, which I've, I'm, I've been typing an email and trying to get it out to all you guys. Um, which, which has the conference program. So if anyone's interested and wants to know more, obviously they're welcome to come to that or can speak to me uh, separately and go, go, I can tell you, talk you through what's, what's been happening. Well, Vicky, thank you very much. Yeah, it's good. No